You're listening to the Art of Quantum Healing podcast with your host, Lisa Nadler. Each week we'll be welcoming divine souls who have overcome trauma, mental health addiction, and found next level abundance through mind, body, and soul connection. We will be going deep on one subject to teach and guide you. My mission is to help you high vibe, thrive with inner peace, passion, and purpose, all in the name of evolution. Welcome everybody to another beautiful episode of the Art of Quantum Healing and this afternoon or where this divine goddess is tonight <laughs> I have the beautiful Sarah Poe on and I came across Sarah quite randomly um, I was reaching out to have somebody come in and speak in my mentorship group and this divine soul said yay I'll do it and it was just like yeah and we first time we talked there was a massive connection it was like boom 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 and um, and then she spoke and, and we've sort of been like in each other's energy and and so ever since and it's been so beautiful beautiful and Sarah I love the way that you call yourself a love alchemist I love the way you say that your genius is is what was it your genius is your heart this just I mean and your radical faith and love it was the medicine it, it just encapsulates everything that you are and I just think it is so beautiful to be in someone's energy and someone's vibration and some with somebody connecting of such purity and just the purity of love you really encapsulate it you really really do so well Welcome to my beautiful podcast. I'm so excited for my audience to get into your juiciness. Ooh, thanks for having me. <laughs> I feel like we're reflections, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the mirror. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beautiful. So I'd love you just to share first a little bit about you and how you came to be doing what you do. Mm, well, uh, for about 22 years, I've been a photographer. So that was my first love and passion was actually the art of storytelling through photographs. Mm. And along that journey of being a photographer, portrait artist and telling people stories that way, I really uh, was able to drop into people's hearts. And I found myself like naturally being a therapist to the people that I was working with. Oh, wow. Uh, naturally just that came naturally to me. And uh, then fast forward, I got intrigued by the stars first. It was like astrology started pulling me in. Um, and so that that sacred science brought me in and then led me to the human design, led me to the gene keys. And then so the last like five years, I've been in a deep dive mm. of these sacred sciences and in now coaching and, and guiding people. Yeah, I love it. And you've got an interesting upbringing too, haven't you? Because you were the complete opposite to what you were doing now, living, breathing, and and, and being. It, it's it's it's. When you told me, I was like, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I I grew. My childhood was like I grew up the daughter of a Baptist preacher in the United States in Southern Appalachia, and my grandfather was a Baptist preacher, and his father and we go on down the line and my father resigned from the church when I was 15 but up until that point like it was evangelical you know like not allowed to wear pants don't even talk about swimming in a pool with boys uh no rock and roll except my dad would sneak like Bob Dylan and Johnny Cash and things like that <laughs> <laughs> little rebel <laughs> he was already rebel um yeah so then life shifted he kind of made that first brave leap for us you know I uh, yeah and now my dad is a uh, the hospice spiritual director so he's a death doula now wow yeah it's what beautiful. a special thing to be doing far out yeah yeah mm -hmm. wow. Awesome. So as a child, I definitely wouldn't have said, when I grow up, I'm going to be an astrologer. <laughs> no, you would have been condemned, wouldn't you? <laughs> Probably wouldn't have gone over well. Oh, yeah. And how beautiful is it that he made that decision and he showed you that you can actually change your life mm -hmm. to do what you want to be doing instead of being in somewhere that you just don't feel right. It's so uh -huh. beautiful. Oh. And I gave him my first reading. 
when I first started studying this, I said, dad, I want you to be the first person that I read your soul's blueprint to. Oh, and we both it. cried. We just, we cried and, and because he's, there it is, his story written in the stars. How could he deny it? You know? So it's beautiful. Wow. There's so, and we're going to get into astrology soon. There is so much that the power of the all, all the different modalities that you do and and it's funny how they're all different but they're all come together just perfectly don't they they i mean mm -hmm. yeah they, they really do they they as you say they, they completely read your soul your soul blueprint it, and it's it's mm -hmm. there on black and white and you and i remember when i did my um when there's little quick free gene keys and 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 not so much with the um human design because i couldn't quite understand that because it's like whoa but the gene keys had a little recording and i was crying i was like oh my god this is me this is me this is exactly me so tell us a little bit of the, about the genes keys and the human design okay let's start with human design because i feel like human design kind of begins that and then the gene keys is a deeper dive um, so human design is one of our more recent sacred sciences, um, and it is based off of astrology. So it is based the, the math back because I handwrite charts and um, it is based off of your astrology. So that's how we get the, the, the mathematics for the human design. But human design is uh, the part of our blueprint that teaches us about our energetic body okay so here we're looking at you could say your chakras or your energetic um your energetic body right so that's this is the science of our energetic body how my energy works unique to me and how more importantly how it works with other people so we can really understand how we connect with another energetic being <clears throat> and um it's profound mm -hmm. and it is there it is rather complicated but it can be simplified right we yeah if you, if you know how to do it and know how to read it for me it was like yeah oh, what is the list? yeah <laughs> yeah but like anything it's meant to be contemplated over time mm -hmm. right so there's just the beginning parts of it like which design are you? Are you a generator? Are you a manifester, a projector, or a reflector? Or that crossbreed of the manifesting generator? So that's the first thing we go into. Um, and then our energetic centers that are related to the chakras, your emotional center, your sacral center, your, your battery, the human battery, the root center, the throat, you know, we go into all those different aspects. And so in human design, there are 64 gates in human design, right? Mm -hmm. And we get that from our astrology, where the planets were when we were born and where the planets were three months before we were born. So those mathematics come together. That's how we get our human design. Why so we're looking that? at Why we're looking at our unconscious mind. Yeah. Three months before the 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 download that he had that Rahuru had was that that was our unconscious mind that oh, drops in right. right and then when the moment you take your first breath we're talking about the conscious personality okay oh, yeah. so those two things together that's why when you're looking at design you see the red and the black lines what's the, what's the red and the black lines where the planets were when you were born and where the planets were those three months before you were born and then on the outside of the human design, you'll see these little bars. Well, that's the I Ching. And that's a sacred science that came along hundreds of years ago that then human design is based off of. So can we continue to evolve more, right? Right. Yeah. Wow. Fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was looking at your human design a little bit too. <laughs> I actually found out that I was born three months before I was supposed to be. Like I was supposed to be born in July, August, October, and I was born in July. Oh. Was three months early. Yeah. Couldn't wait to come out, apparently. I guess so. Hmm. So you're looking at my one, were you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Yes. Uh yeah um we'll have to we're going to dive into yours eventually. Yeah, definitely <laughs> <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense uh, but just what i know of you so far so <laughs> of course it does <laughs> yeah it 
does. And then yeah, you it, it, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah. So looking at that, then we can, we can understand how to take care of ourselves, how we communicate, mm. right? Um, say for instance, I'm a manifester in my design. And so I have a lot of centers that are open, but my throat center is defined to my willpower center, which is a motor center. So I have this, the motor center activates my throat, which makes me a manifester. So I'll have these big creative bursts, these big sparks, these to initiate things, to spark things, but I don't have that um, sustainable energy that that lasts where you have the sacral energy that long lasting energy, that energizer bunny generator, aren't I? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ah, so that makes a lot of sense why I'm always go, 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 go. Yeah. Ah. Yes. So I will have bursts of energy and then I kind of crash. I, I go out into the world and I create and I'm, and I, and I work with people and then I'm exhausted and I need deep, deep rest. So if you were somebody that didn't realize that and you were constantly in action mode, you're in launch mode, or you're in sales mode, or you're in, like, especially within your business, you're in go, go, go mode, then you would burn out really bloody quickly. And plus you wouldn't be able to access your true genius because it'd be so clouded, wouldn't it? It'd be like <laughs> trying to run your your uh, your car on on a on an oil rag sort of thing. So Yeah, mm-hmm. and that was my story, always thinking something was wrong with me. <sighs> Got yeah. And like we talked about before, I, you know, I was diagnosed bipolar when I was like 20 and I really believed that and owned that and thought there was something wrong with me to the point where I was uh, at one point, they wanted to put me on disability. said I would never be able to work. I'd always be, have to be taken care of. Um, they had me so highly medicated and all the medication just made me <laughs> bipolar. <laughs> they made me, but um yeah, now that I, label. I yeah, way to label. And of course, and then I know this with my when I got diagnosed with adrenal fatigue. Um, oh. and the minute I got diagnosed with that, I pretty much shut down. It's like I got labeled with something, so I became mm-hmm. that thing. So it's, yep. it, it, this is yeah, interesting, so yeah. interesting. So what 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 happened after you realized that you? How did you find out that you weren't bipolar? Is this when you started doing this work? Yeah. So you know. I, Um, I was in an abusive relationship in high school. So really what I had was PTSD, Mm. right? What I had was PTSD, but I went to a doctor and I told them that story, told them what had happened to me. And instead of diagnosing me with trauma, uh, they said, you're bipolar. And then they sent me home with four medications and a bunch of books on bipolar, you start reading these books and you see yourself in it. You think, oh, wow. Yeah. I have these crazy highs where I can't sleep up, you know, for nights at a time. And then I, and then I crash and I'm depressed and I'm suicidal. And, and so you, um, you believe it, you know, yeah. and then you say, I'm crazy. I'll show you crazy, you know? <laughs> I love that line. I used to say that. I love it. <laughs> and that's what happens a lot, isn't it? And, and, you know, we, we get put in this box, we get given some tablets and we get told that this is what we are. And of course, we start believing it. And there's, that, there's also that story that I've heard about, like that, that just one of the many stories, a lady that was diagnosed with cancer and she got said, you, you are going to have eight, eight weeks to live. And she was like, no, screw you. And she went and she actually did everything that she wanted to do. And she just kept living and living and living and living and living because she didn't get caught up in the, oh, well, I'm going to die now. So I might as well go into my little shell. It's exactly the same thing, isn't it? Mm. So the yeah. power of power of, um, no, of knowledge for who you are, like with, yeah. this, with this work that you do is, is so powerful. It's so important. Yeah. Mm. I had a major turning point, like I had a few God moments and then I had a one big one in uh, 2008 and I threw out all of my medications, which I wouldn't suggest anyone to do. You went cold turkey. I went cold turkey Um, and I didn't tell anybody, but it was a God. I was like, I was highly suicidal at the time. I didn't know what else to do. And I was at a turning point. I'm like, I kept going from doctor to doctor to ask them to help me to get off of these medications. And no one would help me, not one doctor. And I was at this last resort of this doctor. And um, 
had been at the state center and everything. It's wow. um, my story is profound. Um, and this doctor, I said, please. And she said, well, I could switch your Seroquel for Valium. And if you know anything about any of that, I had this moment, like all the God chills just kind of went into a blank state and I didn't get into my car and I drew, and I walked like eight miles home and in that, and it was raining and it was one of those moments. And I just was praying, like you, you get it. Something has to change here. I cannot live this way anymore. And I did throw out my medications, which I would not suggest to anyone to do, but I detoxed and I kept it a secret. I didn't tell anybody because I didn't want anybody. Did you have huh? a daughter then? Did you have a daughter then? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. going through all that and you're raising a child by yourself i was Holy raising God. her by myself we wow. were yep she's quite my healer as well as you know she's my teacher my healer as well as i am to her we've raised each other she's mm-hmm. profound um but yeah and i and i didn't tell anybody because when you're diagnosed and when you're labeled this way and everybody believes it then they believe that you need the medications what happens is people will say oh she's not on our meds People, and I and I've talked to many people in the same way, and that's the story because mm-hmm. they're so indoctrinated that this is the only way. And yeah. for me, what I found, I was like, "Show me the way, and I will." And then one day, I'll be uh, able to walk beside other people. I called it my warrior spirit. I would just like get up every morning, put my warrior spirit on, and be like, "One day down the road, I'm going to walk beside women just like me, brothers and sisters just like me." Wow. And that's where I am now. And so I've learned all these modalities along the way and detoxing and breath work and yoga and nature therapy. And then when I came across these sacred sciences, it, it was, all just came together. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I make up actually my man, my, the type of manifestor I am makes up 2% of the population. So I'm, I'm so different than the rest of the world in the way I work. And that doesn't mean I'm more special or worse or better. It means that I operate differently than most of the world. Yeah, so yeah. I've wanted to be understood. The whole life, the thing was, I want to be understood. I'm so misunderstood. Now I don't care. Now you're like, <laughs> I fucking told you. Oh, now I'm not going to understand me. That's okay. <laughs> Wow. That's yeah. a huge story. I actually haven't heard all of that. I've heard bits of it, but that was, wow. Yeah. That must have been a really scary time in your life. And <clears throat> I just want to celebrate you for coming and honor you for coming through the other side to where you are now. Whew. Hey, yeah. We're never given more than we can handle, are we? Mm-mm. Yeah. Right. And I'm grateful for all of it because I really, that's how I'm able to love the way I love. Yeah. Because I had to love myself that deeply. And if I could love myself in those parts of who I became, yeah. then I can love and forgive anyone because I can walk beside them in that way. That's what makes us be able to love people is our suffering. <laughs> yep, I totally yeah. agree. It's funny because I actually got diagnosed when I had panic attacks and anxiety. Um, I actually got diagnosed with. Um, and that was from an ex too. That was from an abusive, abusive relationship. Mine was verbal, not physical, and it just head fucked me. I was just, mm-hmm. oh, you know, I didn't know where I was, what I was doing, who I was, and it took me like I could not leave the house. I didn't leave the house for four months, and then after when I got the Valium, every day I had to take a Valium. Or I told myself I couldn't leave the house because I was diagnosed with this. Oh, you've got pan- panic attacks and, and all this sort of carry on. And I was like, oh, good God. So it's, and it's, it's nothing like your story, but, but still, you know, the way that we can get put in a box and told this is who we are, this is what we're meant to be, this is, this is what we need. When if people got to understand the depths of what is in their true soul and who they are and to get to ultimately the unconditional love, which is what we're here to do because we're all one living this experience as well as living our human experience because that's what we're here for. But, you know, if we can we can get to that space of true understanding on who we are, we can we can stand strong in, in, our, in our vessel. We can stand strong with our pillars of life. It's it's such a beautiful thing. It really, really is. So well friggin done. Thank you. So tell us about human design. Human I, design. Oh, Jenkins. Oh, what did we just do? Jenkins. Sorry, you human design. <laughs> like, which one did we just do? We've talked so much in between. <laughs> so I'll tell you. So, so when you start to understand human design, which 
you know, we, as we talked about, you can go deep into that. We yeah. understand how we connect with each other. So when I was talking about those 64 gates, mm-hmm. and when you, when you see them, you'll see these 64 numbers that are in all the centers. Those gates are our genetic codings, like our DNA, mm. 64 DNA. So when you know your human design and you want to dive deeper, we go into the gene keys. And the gene keys are my favorite because I'm a deep diver. <laughs> and when you go into the gene keys, you know, we're looking at 64 DNA codes in our body yeah. and each of them holding this, this message, this teaching for us to contemplate, right? If you, I always say, even if you didn't know your design, your soul's blueprint, and you just picked up the gene keys, every single one of them is a, something to contemplate for us. Mm-hmm. But when we are looking at our unique gene keys, Um, we're looking at Richard Rudd created a way for us to kind of go through our own transformational journey um, that goes to where the sun was when we were born, the earth, right? So how we light up the world, how we're grounded into the earth. Um, And so we go on this journey to understand ourselves through that. And what's brilliant about this is, so every one of these genetic codes, the way he... um, he uh, downloaded this was to see the shadow of this code and the gift and the city. So the shadow being where we're still in fear or victimization. Mm. And most of humanity is still in fear or victimization of most of these key codes, right? Mm. So you're looking at that. And once you can really look at it and see that within yourself, you're aware of it, we, we can transform it. We can raise the vibration of it. We can be aware of it. We can embrace that. And then we, we embody the gift next. Mm -hmm. And so the gift frequency is what we kind of want to be living at. When we're living at that frequency, we're giving that gift off into the world. Mm -hmm. And then the Siddhi is the highest frequency of that code. And, And so what I find is when we contemplate both the shadow and the Siddhi, that awareness really brings us into living in that gift. And we'll taste that Siddhi sometimes that Mm -hmm. mystical taste of heaven um, the purest form of who we are, our higher self. Right. Right. And so when we contemplate that, it kind of pulls us out of that fear shadow. Right. Yeah. 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 So there's three journeys in the gene keys. You take the first journey to really embody and understand your soul's purpose, how you light up the world. Right. And then the second journey is called the Venus sequence. And that goes into Um, we look at our childhood woundings and our childhood, how we developed in those first, the seven, first seven period, the seven to 14, 14 to 21. And the real Venus path is about learning to return non-love with love. Yeah. It's a journey. (laughs) That is challenging that one, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) It's like you don't um, you don't embody your gene keys overnight. Like, no, you don't get the reading, thing. and then oh, I'm I've mastered that overnight. It's a deep contemplation that happens over time. So it's like breaking up little 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 bite size, little bite size, little bite size mm-hmm. until it makes the shows the impact in your life. Because that's a mm-hmm. lot, isn't it? I mean, that's a lot to to go through. Mm-hmm. A, lot, a lot of yeah. knowledge. I mean, sorry, it's a lot of knowledge, isn't it? It's a lot in it. Yes. It is. Um, but th- the way that I present the sciences is to weave them together, to weave all the three systems together. And then we, we can choose one aspect of that to meditate on and contemplate and um, to work on, on ourselves till we embody that. And then the other way we can work with all of these is to see what's transiting and what we're moving through as a collective. Mm. So Right. So astrology, human design, gene keys, there's keys in there that teach us about who we are on the planet. What's our unique gifts? What's my unique challenges that I'm here to face? And then when we look at where we're transiting, we can see what the collective is moving through. Uh, and that's that having that sort of knowledge with the collective for me lately I've been, like I've only been really been taking tapping and well, been able to tap into the collective myself through channeling probably in the last sort of year year and a half it has so much understanding because half the, sometimes you're like 
this is not, I don't, this doesn't feel like it's mine. It really doesn't. What, what I'm feeling, what I'm going through, what, why am I going through? Why is all of, like, we've just been through, like we spoke about, it's been all about money. We've just moved through a gate mm -hmm. of money, haven't we? Abundance. And mm -hmm. it's been like stickiness around money and all these different <clears throat> things have come up around money. And you're like, why is this happening? And then when we go on that call with you and you're like, well, we're in gateway, was it 19 or something? Or I can't remember. Yeah, what we're it was. moving there. Right now we're in seven. Ooh. Seven. Is this a different one than what we were last time on the phone? That was only a few weeks ago. Yes. Okay, tell us about yeah. seven. <laughs> no, because we transit that we have sixty-four gene keys that we move through in a in a year cycle. So you're moving quite a lot, like yeah, constantly. yeah. So I use and you know, and I handwrite mine through the sidereal system um, to see where we're exactly at. Because you know, as you know, people think that we're right now in Virgo season already. But if we looked at the sun today, the sun is sitting right there in Leo. So we're in that Leo season. Actually, I'm not a Leo. That, I want you to talk about that because I always thought I was a Leo. Like because of the dates that we're given, I was, was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm a Leo. And then when you showed us the I don't know, call it true chart, I know what you actually want to, want to call it, what it actually is, but the truth of what it actually is, like so many other things that we've been led to believe are fucking bullshit. I was like, oh my God, I'm a cancer, <laughs> which makes sense. You are. My mum always said to me, because um, you're on the cusp, you need to re-cancer, you're more cancer. And I don't know why she ever said that, because I was a couple of mm. days after it, but it was like, and, I, and when I was reading my star stories, cancer always resonated. It always resonated with me. So let's talk about the reasons behind that, why we are actually, what's actually happened with the astrology. Yeah, this is another, this is one of my huge God moments that pointed me to do this work because it was like five years, six years ago when I was on my birthday and realized that the sun wasn't in Gemini on my birthday. And I had this like, like God chills <laughs> crying, like, wait a second. And, you know, bipolar, I had in my mind thought, oh, the evil twin, the bipolar. Oh, of course. Right. I connected that too. So in that moment, it was another shedding of my false self to know, no, actually it's Taurus and you are here to speak through the heart and yeah, profound. Like wow. for you, cancer yeah. is the heart and like your incarnation cross in your, cause I wrote all your charts out in the sidereal. And so your incarnation cross is the right angle cross of service. Oh, You're here to, <laughs> you, it's all about the, the, like your soul's purpose. The theme of your life is to lead from the heart, to serve from the heart and to serve others in a way that makes them sovereign, to create sovereignty. Well, and that's service. not me at all, Sarah. <laughs> not me at all. It couldn't possibly be. Oh my God. That's me in a nutshell. It's exactly what I do. Yeah, I know. Oh, wow. So you want me to tell you kind of like the difference in the, uh, the astrologies? and? Yes, please, 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 please. And the reasons why and how it all came yeah. about. Yes. Yes. So we, we originally uh, followed the stars, right? We originally were one with nature as our, that's how we, operated in the world. We as humanity knew the names of all the trees around us, the herbs mm -hmm. around us, how the tides worked. And we absolutely knew where the stars were. We knew them by name and we, we, we knew to follow them to know when to plant our seeds, when to harvest, when to migrate, all these things. Mm -hmm. And um, so then uh, <laughs> there was a man named Zora Astar who had a vision of the star, the Magi, to start looking for when Yeshua was coming, when Jesus was coming, right? Mm -hmm. So he trained the Magi. And then when we look into Lakota and different and Vedic and different people all around the world, they were also getting these visions of this, the one that was coming. So all of these like Magi across the planet were following the stars, right? Then we could go deeply into Yeshua's whole story written in the stars. It's just this beautiful story um, and how we were 
his entire story and his miracles, like walking on the water during the season of Aquarius and how Virgo plays this deep role in his life. The Virgin, who's a Virgo, Mary is born in the sign of Virgo, the Virgin. She's harvest, right? And Yeshua is born and dies under the season of Virgo. Okay. And um, so Virgo plays a really powerful role in the story, right? <clears throat> then after Jesus dies, after Yeshua dies, within a hundred years, the Roman in uh, the times of the Romans, a man named Claudius Ptolemy comes along and he wants to create a map of the stars. And this is similar to the time when we get the Gregorian calendar and we start creating maps and calendar systems. And so I look at it as when we stopped being um, in relationship with the stars, like we were with nature, we stopped yeah. looking up and we started looking down at this map that we got. And from then on, the shift happens. Just admit something I heard your daughter say in the webinar that you did, you recently did. Mm -hmm. um, and if anybody wants a, a copy of that, um, just reach out to either Sarah or myself. And she said, and, they've, and, and it's gone even deeper now when you think about it, because what do we do? We now look down and just look at our phones. Oh, so yeah. We constantly... Yeah, anyway, keep on with your story. <laughs> yeah, no, not, our children are wise. Listen to your children. Oh. So wise that she is right. She's like, yeah. continue that. We used to go to bed with a flame, with a fire, and yeah. now we go to bed with screens. Yeah. So another part of that, um, so so the the planet moves on a wobble. You've, most people have heard of the Earth's wobble. So we know that that happens. And so... Uh, the seasons change and the, our relationship with the plants changes. Every 72 years, we move one degree out of alignment with that map. Now, if you were continuing to look at the stars and the sun, you would know all oh, the sun moves different and, and you would have continued to chart that and know that movement. But because people have looked at this map, we're now 24 degrees out of alignment. So the tropical astrology system or the Western astrology system is 24 degrees out of alignment. So that's why people think now we're in Virgo season. But when you look at the sun, the sun is absolutely in, in the constellation of Leo. Yeah. And when we did and, that call, you were, that everybody was going on about the lion's gate and you were like, and this is what just hit me. I was like, mm -hmm. what the hell? And you said, we're not in the lion's gate. We're no. not in the lion's gate. We can't be in no. the lion's gate. We're not in. And I was like, holy shit. So all these people are out there because their perception on what they have seen is that mm -hmm. this is what we're all we're going through a Lionsgate portal so what actually makes me wonder is you know <laughs> the deep level of badness around when when we're actually doing our work and opening up these portals and we're not actually even in them it, it it's quite scary to think of it it really really mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want nothing to do with those ceremonies around that because it's not even in alignment and the thing is we've become people are followers yes and they just follow right along believing in it without questioning or looking it up and i'm just an eternal student i want to know everything there is about something when i'm involved in it mm. and um yeah so we've just continued to follow along so if you're going to a Lionsgate ceremony, do the research to find out what it is. And it was originally like an Egyptian ceremony mm. uh, because they worshiped the sun. I don't worship the sun. <laughs> but it's been turned into a whole spiritual thing. Oh, it's a portal. We can access this abundance. Yeah. They just hit those certain things, don't they? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's wrong. It really oh. is. Like, And I must admit last year I did a Lionsgate transmission. I didn't know any difference. So it's mm -hmm. it's not that... You know, I was ignorant. I didn't look into it because we do. We just believe and we go with what we think is right. And when you're looking at the, the, the astrology, it's like, well, these have always been the dates. So why would it be different now? It, uh -huh. it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to comprehend or to even think about looking into it because it's what's what we've been taught. And we could go a whole different level on this sort of subject. But, you know, it's the same as astrology. I always thought I was a Leo. But if, mm -hmm. you know, as you say, the planets move. Was it seventy-two degrees? Yeah, we move once one degree every seventy-two years. Here's another thing: is that the human heart beats 
72, uh, you know, 72 times a minute. So the earth's heartbeat mirrors how heartbeat. human heartbeat. So now that we're right now in Leo season, Leo activates the part of the human heart. And so the cosmic heart mirrors our, our hearts. It's pretty profound. That is profound. Holy moly. Yeah. Wow. So, mm -hmm. We are one, aren't we? We are one. Oh. The, the other part that I love about the you know, type, I use a type of astrology called Astrosophy, which is the wisdom of the stars aligned through Christ, the Sophia Christ. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, so I use different mathematics for that be, that are aligned with the, be, with the beginning. And, um, and it's not fear-based. Another thing happened when that shift happened with Potomoli uh, is that somehow along the line, we've become, use astrology as a fear factor like fear-based just like religion is fear-based and and me growing up in the church i can now see my role in this um then that, which is why i question everything because growing up in an evangelical church i started to question everything and that is what makes me more likely to question everything before i just blindly follow thank god you do <laughs> and, and you know so i want to understand that um, and so it's very, it's love-based when you start to understand uh, Astro Sophie and the translations of the Zodiacs and the stars through the Christ, it is so deeply transformative. It's love-based. It's not fear-based. You're not terrified of Mercury retrograde. You know, it's a season to slow down. Cancer doesn't have this hard shell. That's just too ultra sensitive. It's the rib cage that holds the heart of Christ. It's, you know, wow. it, man, it, it controls our breath, Yahweh, the breath of life that moves through cancer. So cancer season, which is your sun sign is the season to nurture our inner world. So it, even like how you light up the world is through not only your own inner world, nurturing your own inner world, which reflects outwardly, but to guide other people to do that inner work. So because what that's is, what, what about the, um, the Gemini, Gemini the, the, the twins, what's the twins one? Oh, I can't think. Gemini is the twins. Yeah. Gemini. So my husband's Gemini and every now and again, I say to him, Oh, your twins coming out. So that could be absolute rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be Taurus too. Who knows? But Dang. Gemini, yeah, Gemini uh, represents our wings or our arms and the part of the body, and it represents brotherhood and community. Wow. Yeah, so that's what, and there are aspects to it when you think uh, Gemini uh, is unique and rules communication in that way. Well, really, Gemini is, uh, you know, involves community, wanting to connect people together, wanting to nurture people in that way and be out outward in that way with community, bring people together in that way. You need to bring out a new book on, on astrology. I mean, seriously, I know that. how many books did you read last year when you, when you went down this journey? Cause this was like, Holy shit. How did you do? And your daughter called me the other day on it. How many books did you read? I, I mean, probably over 30 books, but she's commenting on the night that I ordered like, and there were so books. many books that were coming in. Like when you, go all in, you go all in, sister. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm doing this. I Googled like Christian astrology one night at three in the morning and I found this Rudolf Steiner, this Astro Sophie, and I was like, I need every single book on it. <laughs> With the history, I gotta know everything about this. <sighs> and that, that's the, the work that you're here to do so you know when you become an authority on something then you can see exactly what you've just seen you can see the truth behind the veil and the veil is getting very thin so when you start to see it that's it it's like start and, and those that are listening that are serious it really brought something beautiful into our attention start questioning everything question fucking everything like even the small things that you've taken for granted or you've been told or you've been programmed and question everything because you could be living we're all living in such a delusional space of what the reality actually is and it's it's really time to stand up and 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 look for the truth not believe everything you've been told and it's not your parents fault it's all your grandfathers or their great grandfathers or etc cetera, etc cetera. it's just question everything for goodness sake like this is amazing sarah really yeah. really is that it's here's a theory on potomoli too when that happened 
he saw the Virgo sign differently. Like Virgo is always seen as holding a sheath of wheat or corn. If you're indigenous, she was holding corn. Roman, uh, you know, in Yeshua's time, a sheath of wheat. Um, and so she met, represented the harvest. It, she represented Isis in Egypt, right? The divine mother. She represented divine mother, Sophia Christ. When Batomali comes along, he translates Virgo as her arms go down. She's not holding anything in her hands. Her arms are down and he um, sees her as reclining backwards, not forwards, like not standing straight up holding this, but as reclining backwards and her arms go down at her sides. So philosophers along the way have said that he dethroned the virgin, which she plays such a deep role in Yeshua's life in Mary Magdalene in the Sophia Christ. So I'm having this deep dive with my dad the other day oh, about divine pumps. feminine. Oh, so dad, could this have been another point where the shift, the divine feminine shifted? And now we see this truth coming back mm. now because divine feminine is on the, on the rise. We're here to bring that back into balance. And so now all of a sudden the truth about all this is coming up. Profound, right? I was getting goosebumps as you were talking. My whole body was <laughs> vibrating. I was like, "Holy shit!" And you can see it, like. And it's funny because I've just read the, the listened to the Sophia's code. So this is just, mm. it's just another piece of it, another piece of it, another piece of it. And you can just see how little by little things have been changed to fit other people's needs and wants mm. and desires and greed and 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 control. It's Honestly, what is unraveling now is just, and this is just a, a, a little aspect of everything else. It's it's mind blowing. It really is. Mm -hmm. You can see how the little pieces. It's almost like that, that. There's been a chess game being played. Little pieces, bit by bit, have been played until all that is truth has been wiped away, and the installation of what they want us to believe has been implemented. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And you look at some tribes in some places that still do follow the sun and still do do their harvest to the to the time of, of, of everything that you were speaking about and, and still do run from that way. And they live such beautiful lives and they live long lives, like yes. long lives. <laughs> but they're not mm -hmm. caught up in the fear. They're not caught up in all the all the different other things. They're not caught up in the non-truth. They're actually living with the with the nature. And I can see why many people are just going and pitching a tent and living there i really can <laughs> they're living prosperous too because they know how to take care of themselves yeah. and they're living in harmony with nature that's the disconnection mm. the wow. big disconnection is the disconnection with nature the disconnection with the stars which is ultimately our disconnection with one another our disconnection for the from the divine from god from goddess yeah yeah Pretty much so yeah Wow. When you look at this, if you looked at astrology, human design, and gene keys without looking at your soul's blueprint, and we just journeyed together through a year, it is holy heart transformational. <laughs> like, wow. I mean, it, it, because I've, yeah, because I've been doing that. I've been writing that. I've been, I write up charts like every couple of days to see what transits we're moving through based on Astro Sophie. And um, like right here in the Leo season, it's all about leadership, leading from the heart. It's all about things that embody the heart. Like right now we're in the seventh gene key, which the shadow is division, where because we're where humanity is living in, the, in fear, they just follow leaders who are seeking power and greed and wealth. And their leaders are, are being picked because they're leading from power and greed and wealth yeah. yeah and so that's it makes followers that are in the shadow and leaders that are in the shadow yeah. but the gift is um is uh what's the gift guidance to be a good guide what does it mean to be a real true leader it means to listen it means to walk beside one another yes. it means to live from the heart to be in service mm -hmm. so even your incarnation cross aligns with that gene key yeah. Because it's all about living in service. And when you're living in service, whether it's your business or your life, and you're thinking about the whole, the collective, there's no reason you can't prosper, <laughs> right? Wow. And so that's the kind of leaders that we 
It's true. Yeah. It's like when you hear, you know, do do what you do because of passion and love. Don't do what you do because of money, because it's never going to fucking align. I know that when I was doing my nine to five job, like I loved it. I was an alcohol sales rep. I was an alcoholic at the time, so it was pretty good because it was quite free. But <laughs> it was I actually really enjoyed the job until I didn't. And then I realized that it was just not aligned. And then when I started doing what I was doing, I was like, how am I even going to make like how am I going to support myself? And people thought I was crazy. And I just believed and trusted exactly like you. I believed and trusted is what I was meant to do. And it felt good. It felt really good in my heart. And you know that if something feels really good in your heart, you're going to be taken care of. Because what's the frequency you're putting out? Love. And that's the frequency of money. Because it just happens Absolutely. to be a green thing that we have to attach. We're so, we give so much power to money. And it's just, this, it's just freaking paper. But, you know, if we could pay in hugs, I'd love it. I'd prefer to pay in hugs. <laughs> Wake me up when that's there. Bring me back into that lifetime. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. That's just really that's... profound. It really is. And then you put that all together and then mm -hmm. it really gives a true understanding solid belief knowledge of who you are, the essence of you. Mm -hmm. it's profound it's been so healing for me for my family i did all my family's charts first um you're so excited i was so excited to see it and i could see the energetics of it i'm like it is yeah. it is powerful you and i was always very intuitive so it didn't none of it shocked me when i saw it yeah, yeah. Uh, and then to understand like, oh, why my mother's a manifesting generator. So she's, you know, she's 70 now, but she has the energy of like a energizer bunny. She can get up hours before me and stay up hours later and always go, go, go. So if we compare ourselves to each other, if you have a parent that's that energetic yeah, and the child isn't able to keep up, the parent might think something's wrong. Why can't you keep up? Are you lazy? You know, these kind of things. Yeah. You're, yeah. Why can't you keep up with me? So when you can start to understand that about your children or like why one child is uh, just tra uh, traumatized in school because it's too much for them um, where other children love it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I always say as well that there's a hunter mind and there's a farmer mind and far and farmer farming minds are really good in school like i'm not a farming mind like they're really good they like the logic of it they like to sit down they like to learn they like to process me i am a um i'm the opposite i'm a hunter mind like i'm go 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 i'm always looking for something i'm always and myself in school i got told off so much because i hated sitting still i hated it and I was always, sort of, and I got so bored, my mum told me the story, I got so bored that I started doing the, the people next to me's homework. I was like, oh, let me do it. Because I, I, I needed to activate my brain. And I got, oh, she may be ADHD or she may be, she's a bit naughty and, you know, all that stuff. But I wasn't. I was just an active kid. School didn't. School is, is a programming process that they've got you in to, act, to spit you out the other side how they want you to be. I mean, let's be fucking honest. So mm -hmm. you get, and they just want to reprogram you all exactly the same way. Well, that's not what life is. That's not who we are. And you've just said it beautifully throughout that, Sarah. We're all so freaking, I mean, you're 2% of one thing. So you're completely yeah. different than... 98% of the world. I mean, that's billions and billions of people. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I love this, you know, and I love the work you do. And it's, it's so beautiful. It, it's, and the fact that you're aligning so much to the world's truth and people's truth is really beautiful. And that you're speaking out about it is just even more just scrumptious. Oh, scrumptious. I haven't used that word in a while. Scrumptious. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything else that you'd like to share is there anything else that you'd like to to leave the audience in with oh just yeah the whole idea of questioning everything and really getting to know yourself whether it is through these sacred sciences yes i believe they are a powerful tool to help you understand yourself you can see yourself your act it really activates those hidden parts of yourself that you've maybe been conditioned out of so really, even in the work I do, it's deconditioning. Yeah. You know, I'm inviting you to die to your old self so that your true self can shine through. And that process is an, it's, 
you know, the transformational path, when you say, yes, I'm ready to become who I am. I'm ready to embody my truth. Mm -hmm. That means you're probably going to lose friendships. (laughs) You know, you might all of a sudden want to quit your job. I'm like, I tell Monet and I tell people, we help you quit your job. We help people quit. We we like to teach people to be quitters because if it is not aligned with what you're doing after you work with us, (laughs) you can't forget that, you know, you can't, you can't unlearn it uh, once you've been taught that. Um, But no matter whether you use this or not, you know, it within your heart, the more we drop into our heart and get out of our heads and start to really tune in, whether that's just spending a day in nature or a weekend in nature, turning off or just like turning off technology for a few weeks, and you really start to tune in, you don't need anything outside of yourself to remember who you are. These are just tools that God gave us Mm. to help it happen like faster, maybe you could say, or to just give us an easier way to contemplate it and activate it. Mm. Yeah. It's a, yeah, a path. Um, and, um, yeah. Cause the human of us wants to understand our soul is like, yeah, I know what's happening. It's all good. Let's just go from moment to moment, minute to minute. It's fine. But then the human aspect, which is what we're here to do, right? I mean, you know, we're a light body having an experience is it wants to attach to something. Well, I want to understand and we become seekers become or just always seeking 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 so when we can stop and go well i don't need to seek anything else because i have all the truth i have all the wisdom i have all the knowledge and i have all the love inside of me i don't actually need anything else then it just opens you up to a whole new world and this is my biggest thing like when people say oh you're a healer i'm like no we're all healers like you're your own healer Mm -hmm. i just i just stand beside you and 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 Mm -hmm. guide you where you need to go it's as simple as that like that's beautiful it's such beautiful i love that And we're all like, we're all on the path. We can either be, I always say like, you will either be drug into the underworld to be transformed by a death in the family or an illness or Mm. something tragic or some deep, dark depression, or you can choose it. And when you choose it yourself, it's a little easier, I believe, because you can take a guide, you can hire a coach or a guide to walk with you or have a sister that walks along with you. you can, you can prepare yourself like tools in the belt for going on this quest, but it doesn't matter. Like your destiny is going to find you. You just either be drugged down in the mud for it. Happened to me. (laughs) It happened to you. (laughs) Yep. Or we can choose it. Yes. That's another belief. You see, oh, you've got to hit rock bottom before you have an awakening. No, you nope. can have one right now. You can have one right nope. in this moment. What Sarah just said, you can go, fuck, that's me. Okay, let's do this. It's as simple as that. It is literally a choice. It's a choice nope. to question everything, to choose a path, and to see that, that, that a different way. And it's not necessarily that, that everything that we are speaking about is, oh, my God, that's just absolutely right, because it may not be completely right for you. But there is definitely parts in this that will activate you and move you into a space of, oh, goodness. Uh-huh. Let's do this. Let's move on. Let's shift forward. So beautiful. Uh-huh. Oh. Yes. With any of these signs, I want to just say this. Yep. Do not get stuck and then just identifying yourself with this. Yes. That's yes. the that's the the trouble with any yep. of this. And I see that in the human design world, in the gene keys world, astrology world. And you know, I do do these readings and I teach these classes and I and I do coaching. And the whole key is this is a playground. You do not have to be, you don't have to have be locked into this as this is who you are. And you definitely don't want to get into a place like, oh, well, I'm a manifester. This is oh, why this and that or whatever, you know, because this is how I am. And we can activate any aspects of these parts of ourselves. We are infinite beyond it. So mm-hmm. don't get locked into it from an ego love place. It. Fucking love that. What a great way to end it. And that's the thing we label. If we need to put a label on everything, get out of your human aspect. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. It was so powerful. I love it. Love it. Love it. Oh, thank you so much for coming on and being a just a divine guest and sharing your wisdom and your potency and your medicine and magic with with those that are listening. I really loved that session. It was beautiful. Oh, I can't wait to get into more of your energy and your goodness. And like me, you should absolutely look up Sarah. So how can they and do some of her stuff like I'm doing the, the three book with the code thing? Oh, I'm so excited. How can they find you? So I'm on Instagram at Sarah Soulshine Poe. 
And I'm also on Instagram for Pose for Peace. That's my daughter and I's work together. Um, and then you can find me on my website, which is poseforpeace.com. Beautiful. And if you're watching the podcast, nip on over to YouTube and it'll, all the links will be there. Thank you so much, gorgeous. Sending you, you and everybody else that's listening so much love. Mwah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel and help us grow the community by sharing it with your friends. I am your host, Lisa Nadler, and this is The Art of Quantum Healing.